Hey there folks, today while I wait for some parts I'm going to talk about my cheap logic analyzer and how I set it up. I bought this handy little board in 2018 for 3 euros 62 or around 4 US dollars and I can still find them for around 5 dollars on AliExpress with shipping. The main chip is a CY7C68013A which operates at 3.3 volts with 5 volt tolerant inputs, according to the datasheet at least, which makes it perfect for use with Arduino, for example. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it working at the time, so it sat in a box until 3 days ago. Now, with help from a guide posted to the Cypress forums in late 2019, I'm going to show you how I got it working. A link to the guide is provided in the description, but a couple of steps in it are missing or unclear to me, which is why I made this video. First, let's download and install all the software and files we need. Leave the board disconnected from your PC for now. We'll start with the Cypress EZ USB SDK. This has the drivers and some software we need to set up the board. You'll need to download this from the Cypress website, which is linked in the description. This does require a Cypress account to download, but it's free and straightforward to set one up. Once downloaded, install it. I chose a complete installation, but I believe you can do a custom installation with only SciSuite USB 3 enabled, since we do not need the Eclipse IDE or the GCC compiler. Now that's installed, let's install Sigrock PulseView, a free, open source piece of logic analysis software. Download the installer from the Sigrock website, linked in the description, and run the installer and follow the steps. Once installed, we can download the final file we need. Go to the guide linked in the description and download the zip folder linked at the bottom of the post. Extract it and go inside the folders. The important file is the EEPROM configuration IIT file. Note that if you'd rather build your own IIT file, you'll need a hex editor such as hexd to create the file. Pasting numbers into Notepad will not work. Now that we have all the software and files, let's connect the board to the PC. Plug in the mini USB cable and power on the board. Make sure J2 is connected for this bit. Windows will probably try to find a driver at this point, so wait for it to finish. Now open up the Easy USB Control Center. It will just be listed as Control Center in the Start menu. If your board appears in the device list now, then great. However, it probably won't. Here's how to fix that. Open Device Manager. A device called Unknown Device should have appeared under Other Devices. Right click this device and select Update Driver. Select Browse My Computer for driver software. Now navigate to where you installed the Cypress Easy USB SDK. For me, this is in D, Program Files, x86, Cypress, Easy USB, FX3, SDK, and then in the 1.3 folder. From here, navigate to Driver and then Bin. Then choose the folder that matches your OS and architecture. For me, this is Windows 10 x64. Select this folder, then click Next. This should install the correct driver for the device. Yay! Now launch the USB control center again. This time, the device should appear in the list. Keeping the device powered on and connected to the PC, disconnect J2. Keep the jumper cap somewhere safe, as we don't need to reconnect it, but you might want to use it later. Now we can program the EEPROM on the device. In the USB control center, make sure that the device is selected and go to Program, FX2, 64 kilobyte EEPROM. Then select the IIT file we downloaded earlier. The software will immediately begin programming the device. This is very quick. After programming is completed, we need to reset the board. For whatever reason, the reset button doesn't work on my board, but turning it off and back on again works fine for this step. Now Windows may try to find driver software again. It will fail, but when it is done, we can launch Zadig, which installed alongside PulseView. We run this in administrator mode because it will install drivers. Once launched, we make sure our unknown device is selected and make sure the WinUSB driver is selected and then click install driver. This can take a couple of minutes and may require a restart of your PC in some cases. Once this is done, we can launch PulseView. At this point, it should automatically detect our board as a 16 channel analyzer called Sigrock FX2 LA 16 chip. If PulseView did not automatically detect the board in the device list, select Connect to Device, set the driver to FX2 LAFW, the generic driver for FX2 based LAs. Leave the interface as USB 
and then click scan for devices using driver above. The device should now appear in step 4, select the device. Click it and click OK. Now our cheap logic analyzer should work with the software. To test it out I hooked up an Arduino to an MPU6050 and I connected the grounds and pins PB0 and PB1 of the logic analyzer to the I2 C bus of the Arduino. The guide highlights which pin corresponds with which channel in pulse view. I then reset the Arduino and started data capture in pulse view after setting the sample rate. Look at all that data! Using a feature of pulse view we can see the decoded I2 C info such as the address, read write modes and data sent. This can be useful for debugging and reverse engineering. Well that's that. If your board doesn't work after this, I have no idea how to fix it. It can be a bit hit and miss with cheap Chinese electronics, but drop a comment and maybe someone can help. To close this out, I'd like to give my thoughts on whether or not you should get one of these boards if you haven't already. I bought one because I figured it might come in handy and it was pretty cheap. It has not been very useful to me for nearly two years, but the price means that hasn't bothered me too much. In most situations where it would have been useful, my cheap DSO-138 oscilloscope has done the job. The oscilloscope can be used to analyse signal voltage levels as well. This analyzer only knows whether or not a signal is high or low. So I'd say if you don't need to do any important timing based multi-channel digital logic debugging, you probably don't actually need one of these. But it might be handy to have around, especially for the price. I'm currently working on a project where this analyzer has been incredibly useful in helping identify and reverse engineer signals, so I'm definitely glad I have one. And with that, I think I've said everything I wanted to about this. Thank you for watching, okay thanks, love you, bye!